in today's video. We're going to be diving into the upcoming pattern, taking a look here at some big time snowstorms where the GFS model and our European model want to bring back the weekend snowstorm for the Eastern Seaboard. They've shown this for a couple of model runs in a row, bringing it back. Um, the European model is more for the Southeast Coast. The GFS model is going to include a lot more of your Mid-Atlantic and Northeast Coast from Florida to Maine absolutely insane storm and it is within five days so crazy crazy developments here we also have insane cold air moving in of course that we've been talking about for a long time now some pretty historically cold temperatures they're going to be prolonged basically from now through the end of these model runs so extremely long lasting cold there should be other snowfall opportunities as well within there as we discussed yesterday so let's go ahead and dive in first off to this european model and we can see for this 15th system here tomorrow, we do see some snowfall develop here for a lot of the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, especially these interior areas. We were originally expecting this low here and this low to phase in the middle, which you can kind of imagine. The, the one that I circled is the one that does not exist because that's where they would have both met up. You can imagine that that would have been a much different outcome for the eastern states for this system. Obviously, there's enough cold air down in Florida and Georgia and Alabama for snowfall. So this would have been an entire East Coast snowstorm in and of itself, which could you imagine if we were having one on Thursday and then Sunday as well? It'd be absolutely insane. As we move towards Friday the 16th, we can see that cold air deepening here. We have a uh, huge pocket of snow showers moving in with this overall cold air mass here for the Plains, Midwest, Great Lakes, and other areas in Canada. As we move past that, we start to see some East Coast activity, this time up here for the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, and Northeast, where we do have some snowfall showers, even a little bit heavier in some spots there showing up for West Virginia and Pennsylvania. Look out for a sneaky couple of inches, maybe, uh, on top of whatever you saw for that Thursday. Uh, and as we move towards Sunday during the day, like I said here on this European model, it's very far suppressed to the southeast where we see essentially from the Florida Panhandle up into southeastern Virginia a chance of a few inches of snowfall. This would not only be a more southeast suppressed storm on the European model, this would also be a much less intense storm than the gfs model but this cold air just kind of lasts we do get a more significant clipper system here moving in for tuesday into wednesday uh here this would be wednesday at 1 a.m on the 21st and as that moves through we do see the impact areas of the great lakes ohio valley and then eventually into the northeast for thursday the 22nd we're still colder our first little sign of a warmer area over the eastern states would be Saturday the 24th, so around 10 days from today, and it looks pretty brief. We have this 987 millibar low pressure center there over Michigan, heavy snowfall for areas of Canada, even on the warm front side of things of this low, so obviously we know these dynamics if you watch my videos, but warm fronts here, cold fronts down here, this warm front area is seeing snowfall on the northern end of that but you have to remember that typically warm fronts are advancing northward so so is that rain snow line so those can be pretty messy we see a lot of pinks and yellows in there uh probably the better area for snowfall is this kind of midwest region wisconsin into the up of michigan and then into canada here uh now as this moves on again that rain snow line on the northeast side of things comes to an end and we do see the cold air return. We do get another kind of clipper slash southern slider system. We can see two pieces of energy to come together here. This is beyond 10 days at this point, so take it with a grain of salt. But we do see these two areas of energy kind of combine here for a, again, clipper kind of southern slider combination. And that impacts the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, some ice down there for areas of Virginia and North Carolina. And even up into the northeast as this eventually develops into a Miller B. Nor'easter for later on uh, in the pattern. This is 348 hours out to take it with a grain of salt, but this would be a significant system for the Mid-Atlantic, Ohio Valley, and northeast with even more cold air at the very, very tail end of this model run. Now again, the GFS model, our most up-to-date GFS model, is the heavy hitter here for this Sunday's system at least. Here's overnight tonight into Thursday, and we can see snowfall again for more interior areas of the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, 
northeast here as that interior low takes over. Um, don't really get any along the coastal low. It's not really expected at this point. And as we move towards Saturday, again, we do get these kind of snow showers around for the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast. A little bit more widespread than the European model here for Saturday the 17th. Something to watch out for. But we can already tell by Sunday morning, 7 a.m., that this is going to be a much more intense snow system popping up on the GFS model run. As we have snowfall from New Orleans... Through areas of southern Mississippi, Mobile, Alabama, the Florida Panhandle, up into Georgia, like Atlanta, South Carolina, North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains here, all seeing snowfall from this one. And as we reach towards the afternoon, we can see this low is placed right along the east coast. 999 right here, we're seeing essentially, again, from the Florida Panhandle up through southeastern Georgia, all of South Carolina, Central North Carolina, Central Virginia here, D.C., Maryland, Delaware, Philly, New Jersey, New York City seeing snowfall. So you've got just some massive areas seeing snowfall by Sunday afternoon. Uh, playoff football games also happening on this day. Uh, I think the Patriots play on Sunday, uh, but they would be playing at about 3 p.m., which wouldn't be snowing yet as of now. So pretty crazy. This low deepens in pressure really intensely off the mid-Atlantic coast. We do see a little bit of sleet in there for areas of North Carolina and Virginia. But basically from eastern North Carolina, eastern Virginia, again, Delmarva, New Jersey, New York City, into southern New England, all seeing heavy, heavy snowfall here Sunday into Monday. This overnight snowfall would likely be the most intense as well. Not only because the low is so strong, 978 now on this model run, but also because it's nighttime, it's colder, your ratios are improved. You're seeing more snowfall accumulating for your overall moisture. So really, really intense snowfall event here. This is giving uh, 2010 Boxing Day uh, blizzard with just how eastern the system is. Or perhaps I think there was the 2018 January blizzard. It might have might have been 2019 forgive my memory but i think it was 2018 uh, where we saw a very very coastal and vertical uh even blizzard in that instance uh, along the eastern seaboard so regardless very intense system bombing out low essentially really heavy for new england uh this would be most likely a blizzard up there with a 968 millibar low pressure center and extremely heavy snowfall popping up for eastern new england of course, again, the European model is much more suppressed at the southeast, but this GFS keeps it a little closer to the coast and keeps more folks along the east coast involved. We're only five days away from this exact point right here. So this isn't a long-range outlook. This isn't even really a medium-range outlook. This is almost bordering on uh, near term. So again, just wild developments. After that storm, we deep it in cold, actually, for the days following. Tuesday the 20th looks freezing. Wednesday the 21st is really cold. Uh, and we see a clipper move through the Midwest, Great Lakes, Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, and Northeast there. And then we do get milder here uh, on this particular model, Friday the 23rd. And really beyond for a minute, we do see another cold air mass move in for Sunday the 25th, which is beyond 10 days, so take it with a grain of salt at this point. But... We stay kind of neutral from that point forward on this model. Uh, really not hugely deep cold to end the month, but it isn't really warm either here. This is looking uh, pretty typical temperature-wise, unless you're in the West and Central states where it does look quite warm to end the month, although the end of the month is 384 hours out, so very, very far out. Looking at the total precipitation, um, again, just really remaining active in a lot of these areas. This isn't really a huge improvement versus yesterday. Again, like I mentioned, yesterday, the model runs, the problem wasn't the precipitation. It wasn't the temperatures. It was just the kind of track and the timing of both of those in combination. So we, ha we had both ingredients all along. Um, we really just weren't seeing anything coming together on yesterday's model runs. But overnight yesterday into today's model runs, we've pretty consistently seen Sunday as a bigger threat than uh, what was originally shown in my videos yesterday afternoon. Looking at the temperatures here on the European model, we really get super cold starting tomorrow on Thursday, much colder in the east, briefly, briefly warm uh, between Saturday and uh, Sunday, but then we get this really cold air again for Sunday the 18th, which on the European model, again, these are the areas seeing 
potential snowfall Sunday afternoon. You need temperatures like this for daytime <laughs> snowfall in the southeast. 20, 25 degrees below normal, and it even might still struggle to be all snow or at least like below 32 during the day in a lot of these areas. Your best shot, obviously, with our current uh, projection would be a little bit further inland in South Carolina and North Carolina here, perhaps, would be your best, best bet. But it's showing a very far southeast snowstorm on this European model for now. Uh, we get really cold air moving in immediately afterwards, Tuesday the 20th. Um, again, a little bit of warmer air works its way in for the 24th, 25th, but we get even colder air moving in afterwards, which is the long range, and then an even larger one for the very tail end of the model run. So a significant difference here on this European model temperature wise to end the month versus the GFS model, which is a good reason to wait, kind of like sit and wait, because if both models are showing completely opposite perspectives, Obviously, it's 15 days out. We have time to kind of see which one ends up being correct out of the two and which one kind of leans towards the other first. For now, they completely disagree, so it's kind of a toss-up for after the, let's call it the 23rd. Uh, but we'll see over time kind of what these models want to do with the long range, uh, hopefully sooner rather than later. But even if it is later, we'll be getting there together, uh, you know, in a few days or a week's time together anyway. Total snowfall on the European model, a little underwhelming uh, for, for the Southeast. I'm actually surprised by how little there is for South Carolina and North Carolina. We have been getting some convective feedback issues on these models. I wouldn't be surprised if that is what's going on here because it almost looks like we're like cutting South Carolina out of the equation. I don't know, very strange, but generally one to two inches uh, for Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, which I guess makes sense considering, again, those ratios. Like I said, even with 20 to 25 degrees below normal, those daytime temperatures are probably going to be sitting right around 32 or even higher. So it might be a struggle to get that accumulating. Definitely uh, possible there. We do see some of the Cascades and Rockies getting a little bit more on board with some heavier snowfall. And also the upper Midwest, Great Lakes, Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. We're seeing tons and tons of snowfall here on this model. Um, so very, very active throughout all of these areas, talking in terms of feet over the next few weeks, not inches. So especially this corridor here, this is a gargantuan amount of snowfall. The GFS model, a lot more exciting for the Eastern seaboard, as you can tell. Um, a lot of this happening a little further inland, which is definitely favoring, uh, snowfall. You need a little less below average temperatures, obviously, but, for some of these deep south areas, I mean, you're going to need some really, really cold temperatures for daytime snow, snowfall. We see Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, Florida Panhandle, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, into the Delmarva, eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, southern New England, and Maine, where, again, you kind of get heavier and heavier with each stage. We're looking at two to six inches on this GFS model for the deeper south locations mostly, so not really exceeding that. And this is the total snow, not the accumulated snow. So you can kind of subtract a little bit off of it. Uh, but just a few a few inches, uh, essentially, is probably what the GFS is sinking here in the deeper south. The more mid-Atlantic tier is where we're talking in terms of more like 6 to 10 inches. Uh, maybe a little bit more on this model for some areas. Maybe pushing 10 to 15 in some of these areas. But for New England, again, it kind of becomes a blizzard there. Bombing out with that low. You get the nighttime temperatures. Uh, we'd start talking in terms of, you know, 15, 20, 25 inches of snowfall in this GFS model. So for something coming up so soon, uh, again, this Sunday, that's a massive difference, especially from this point northward. So when we talk about North Carolina, northward up the mid-Atlantic coast, it's the difference between no snow and a foot to two feet of snowfall uh, with very little time. The clock is ticking. So really interesting situation developing here. Uh, over uh, just a very short period of time, like I said, in the last 24 hours. So really needs to be watched closely. Uh, believe it or not, the highest probability for overall snowfall is the kind of more southeastern side of things at this point, only because we have more models on board with this overall solution. So even if it's suppressed to the south, these areas are still included. Uh, the northeast and mid-Atlantic need the low a lot closer to the coast, which only some models are on board with. So very different from what we're used to historically, but kind of south of this line is the actual area to watch for lighter snowfall being a higher prior, prior, uh, probability, I mean, you say. Um, again, two, three, four, five, six inches is 
not being shown on every single model, but again, flakes to one, two, maybe three inches, but we are seeing from quite a bit of models. Um, but definitely the bigger potential for bigger snowfall totals, but more of a roll of the dice of whether it's going to even happen or not would be this more mid-Atlantic northeast side of things. So guys, huge video update coming up tomorrow because we have to break this one down. Let me know what you think is going to be correct, the GFS or the European model, or maybe even a different solution than that. Let me know in the comments. Uh, be sure to like the video as well. It helps us out so much with the algorithm and everything. Be sure to subscribe because we upload every single day. You can even hit the bell icon for daily notifications when we upload so you never miss one. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.